we continue with uh, the two sector model of the national income determination. This is the part two of uh, what was presented earlier on uh, the two sector model. This is a step-by-step -step example, and uh, it's coming from the introduction to macroeconomics. My name is Elias Muau. Now, let me go straight to presenting the task for this second part. So consider an economy with planned investment of $600 and that consumption function is C equal 0.8Y. Now take note, what makes this unique is that our consumption function this time around has no intercept. In short, there is no autonomous consumption in this model. What we are given is only that part of consumption that depends on income. And if you recall from part one, we said this 0 0.8 here is the marginal propensity to consume. It's the proportion of the change in income that is dedicated to consumption. For example, if income was to increase by $1, then it means $0.8 would be converted to consumption which is 80 cents, will go to consumption. Now, this consumption function is informing us that when drawn on the Keynesian cross diagram, our consumption function will start from the origin. It will start from zero because there is no vertical intercept. So it will be a function emanating from the origin. Now, let me uh, present the tasks, the questions that we need to answer given this, uh, you know, problem we are given and then try to solve these questions without looking at my solution then you can compare with what I will present in this presentation. So our first task is to calculate the size of the investment multiplier. We want to find the level of income. We want to determine the level of consumption at the equilibrium level of national income. We want to derive the savings function and to determine the level of savings at the equilibrium level of national income. And finally, we are told that suppose that investment increased by $100, by how much will equilibrium level of income change? Now, these are the same questions that we answered in part one, except that in part one, our consumption function had two parts. It had the intercept and the, it had this part here that depends on income. So there was autonomous consumption and the consumption that depends on income. In this model, we only have that consumption that depends on income. Why is income? 0 0.8 is the marginal propensity to consume. So let's go straight into uh, finding the solutions. We'll start by finding or calculating the investment multiplier. So recall, our formula for investment multiplier is 1 over 1 minus MPC. We call the MPC the marginal propensity to consume. So our consumption function is 0.8Y. So MPC is 0.8. So we're going to put 0.8 here and solve for the multiplier. So we see when we put 0 0.8, we'll have 1 divided by 1 minus 0.8. We are going to subtract, that will give us 0 0.2, and our multiplier will be 5. Therefore, investment multiplier is 5. And this is the same multiplier that we found in part 1. So, part 1 and part 2 have given us the same multiplier because the marginal propensity to consume has not changed. It has remained 0.8. All right, let's uh, move on to finding the equilibrium level of income. Now, I'll present two parts like before. I'll start with the part that takes uh, into consideration autonomous expenditures and multiplier, and the one that puts all the var variables and functions together to generate income. So method one, recall that income is equal to multiplier times autonomous expenditure. And we also showed that autonomous expenditure only covers the autonomous parts, the autonomous you know, uh, uh, entries in the model. So consumption is just marginal propensity to consume times Y. There is no autonomous consumption. So we take this, which is 0 0.8 times Y. 
okay and our autonomous expenditure will be equal to autonomous investment because our consumption function has no autonomous part so the only autonomous entry in our model will be the investment expenditure so which means autonomous expenditure in this model where consumption starts from the origin our autonomous expenditure will equal the investment expenditure in a two sector model all right so autonomous expenditure in this case becomes 600 because investment is 600 and if we multiply this autonomous expenditure of 600 by the multiplier of five what we are going to get is five times 600 which will give us three thousand dollars therefore our equilibrium level of national income is three thousand dollars in part two we are taking the aggregate demand approach we want to show that aggregate demand is equal to consumption plus investment now we have our consumption function which is 0.8y and we have our investment which is autonomous 600 dollars putting these two into this model we have our income is equal to 0.8y plus 600 uh, collecting like terms, we take 0.8y to the other side of the equation, it becomes negative. So we have y minus 0.8y is equal to 600. So only 600 will remain on the right-hand side. Simplifying or subtracting y minus 0.8y, we get 0.2y, and the right-hand side is unaffected. When we divide through by 0.2 so that we remain with y, we find y will equal 600 divided by 0 0.2, and this will give us $3,000. Therefore, our equilibrium level of income is $3,000. So we've uh, checked using method one, and we'll verify using method two. So it's up to you to use which me whichever method you feel you'll be comfortable with. You can use the other method to actually validate your results so that once presented, you are confident that the solution you presented is correct. Let's move on to the third part of the questions. We want to determine the level of consumption at the equilibrium level of national income. Again, I'll present uh, the solution using two methods. Method one, we'll look at the given function and we do the substitution. So our consumption is equal to 0.8y, where y is y star because we are looking at that equilibrium income. When we substitute, remember equilibrium income is $3,000. When we substitute the 3,000 times 0 0.8, what we get is $2,400. Therefore, our consumption is $2,400. In method two, we use the aggregate demand approach, the formula for aggregate demand, where we say that aggregate demand is equal to consumption plus investment in a two-sector model. So meaning income will equal consumption plus investment. So we rearrange to make consumption subject of the formula, meaning we take C to the other side. Or better still, we take I and uh, Y to be on one side and C to be on the other side. What we'll have is consumption will equal income minus investment. So all we've done is you can simply take this I and take it to the other side of the equation. It will be Y minus I is equal to C, which is what I've presented here. C is equal to Y minus I. Y is income, I is investment, C is consumption. Our income is $3,000 and our investment is $600. So $3,000 minus $600 will give us $2,400. Therefore, our consumption level at the equilibrium level of national income will be $2,400. Let's move to part four. In part four, we want to derive the savings function and determine the level of savings at the equilibrium level of national income. So the first thing I'll do is to derive the savings function in the face of a consumption that starts from the origin and then find the equilibrium savings. So here, our savings uh, in equilibrium, income is equal to consumption plus savings. Now we mix uh, savings subject to the formula. We have Y minus consumption. Our income is uh, uh, given our consumption is this one here. 
So the approach I'll use now first is not to use the 3000. What I want to use first in uh, deriving the uh, savings function is to use the actual consumption function. So I'll get the consumption and put it where they see here. So I'll put 0.8y here. What I'll have is savings is equal y minus 0.8y. By subtracting, savings will be equal 0.2y. So this becomes our savings function. And again, we can see here that our savings function equally starts from the origin when drawn on the Keynesian cross diagram. Let's use this function to find the equilibrium level of savings. Now, our equilibrium level of income is Y star. So equilibrium level of income has been found to be $3,000. So I'll substitute and put $3,000 here. So savings will equal 0 0.2 times $3,000, and this will equal $600. So method one will give you $600. The other method is to use this function here. You know, you've already found your income to be $3,000, and you've already found your consumption to be $2,400. So put your $3,000 here, and put your $2,400 here and subtract. 3,000 minus 2,400 will give you $600. The third method that you can use is to note that in equilibrium, investments will equal savings. So if your investments are $600, then savings will equally be equal $600 in equilibrium. All right, let's move on to the last part, which is uh, part five. Suppose that investment increased by $100, by how much will the equilibrium level of national income change? So here we are taking note that what has changed is our investment, uh, autonomous investment. So change in income will equal multiplier times a change in autonomous expenditure. And this time, uh, this part of autonomous expenditure is the investment. So multiplier times the change in investment. We found our multiplier to be five, and our change in investment has been given here to be $100. So five times $100 will give us $500. Therefore, our income changes by $500. In short, an increase in investment of $100 will lead to a $500 increase in national income. All right, let's look at method two. Method two is to uh, substitute, replace this investment, add it with the old one and push them into the aggregate demand formula. So change in income will equal new income minus the old income. The old income is the $3,000 that we found. We need to find the new income using the aggregate demand formula. Or you can use the one where we multiply multiplier times the autonomous expenditure. So new income is equal to consumption plus investment plus change in investment. I, 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 I took time to explain this in part one. In case you missed it, go back to part one and uh, watch the part where I was explaining how we are adding these two investment plus the change in investment. So I'll substitute. So 0.8y is on the consumption and then 600 is the initial investment and the 100 is a change in investment. This increase in investment. That's the one we are putting here as 100. When we add these two, we have y is equal 0.8y plus 700. By collecting like terms, our negative, our 0.8y will become negative 0.8. So we have y minus 0.8y is equal to 700. This will give us 0.2y. And by dividing through by 0.2, what we get is y will equal $3,500. Now take note, this is a new Y. So the new Y will equal $3,500. We note that for us to get the change in income, we need to get the difference between the new equilibrium income and the old equilibrium income. The new equilibrium income is the income that takes into consideration this increase in investment. The old equilibrium income is the one we calculated with only a 600. All right. So, we substitute, so new equilibrium income is $3,500, old equilibrium income is $3,000. When we do the substitution, our change in equilibrium income will be $500. Therefore, equilibrium income will increase by $500. All 
All right. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, feel free to call or WhatsApp the number showing on your screen or better still send an email to muwauelias at gmail.com.